The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. Yeah, this is the Thursday, September the 5th edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour. Let's get to the Dow. The Dow was down sharply earlier on. I, I couldn't find. I, I, I don't. Oh, there it is. So UNH, which was acting just great yesterday and the day before, and I had it in. Uh, I spoke about this uh, a few days ago. I said the healthcare stocks seem to be doing quite well. UNH is in that category, and it was trading in the five. I think it was the five sixty area. Well, it went up. Uh, sorry, five eighty area. It had two fabulous days. It's down quite sharply today. Down seven at uh, five ninety seven. Maybe that's something political that's been said. I don't know, but it is a leg e, and that's why I said I anticipate that it should be coming back a little bit, maybe go back into the rectangle, but not all of them. Let me see what GEHC is doing, GE Healthcare. Look at that. It, it's just specific to that uh, GE Healthcare. Um, we have one in the healthcare area, SOLV. Oh, it just made a new recovery high. Yeah, that's so. I just wanted to see what it was. Now let's go to the market. So the Dow is up um, three just barely up, but it, it's it's the nine period moving average is still strong. So I'll talk about this in a moment. I don't want to take time right now because I just want to go through the uh, the numbers. The weekly chart is still strong. Um, it is at leg C, it could become a peak C. You've only got two days in which to make the 41,586 level. Now, I don't think it's going to do that. So let's call it a potential peak C right here. It should still go to D because in the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always looking for um, we're always looking for the in assessing what we're looking for. If you can get a buy signal that gets upgraded to a buy mode, round about that leg B, invariably you get to a D, and then other things can happen. But the ob objective in the Chapman wave is to get you to a D. And that's what I'm still anticipating. Let's go to the S&P. S&P um, pulled back just a tad after a very strong, um, I, I shouldn't say very strong, but a nice turnaround intraday from some weakness earlier on. So it's up 20 at 55.40. The nine period moving average, remember I use this as the indicator of last resort when you think everything's selling off for all those people who use the MACD and the stochastic. Remember I've done webinars to explain that there are times where the MACD can fail, the, S &P, the uh, stochastic can fail, the unbalanced volume can fail. The relative strength can fail, and yet the price still goes higher because the nine period moving average is still above the 14. Can it do that for a long time? No, but it can do that for a little while. And if at some point within a very few bars after going negative, it pops back over the green nine period moving average, that would be above 58, 55, 63. That would be very good. That's a long way to go, nearly 30 points. All right. And I'm not sure it's going to do that today. I just think today's a good sign. Uh, that's another thing I'll talk about in a moment. But let me just go to the QQQ because that's the nine period moving average yesterday flipped to negative, and it was holding very well. It's up 3.22 today at 46370. But that's not the issue. The issue is it's just making lower lows and lower highs. And the MACD is weak. Stochastic is down at the 31% level. On balance volume is weak. Rate of strength is weak but trying to find some support and now you've got all the technicals weak and that just says oh you've got to be a little careful here because i don't like this divergence in other words i don't like the dow 30. it's not the dow industrials anymore it's just the dow 30. i don't like to see that um moving independently higher so with that said i uh, am and okay with that said let's go to the iwm the iwm has just flipped positive. It was a little weaker earlier, but it's very close for that nine-period moving average to turn negative. Now, the question is, 
can that still make a leg D? In the short term, that leg D is where the C was made right there on the 26th of August at 22.45. That's still quite a bit under the 228.63 all-time high. So this is making um, a peak C under the previous high, but at the same time, I have no choice to say that there is a chance that I have to call this a peak C1 and that uh, lower high right there on the 29th of 220.98. Wow, it's it's a little too much in points, but it could become a C1, C2. I don't want to go there right now. I'm just going to give it the benefit of the doubt to say it is weak, but I want to see the iShares Russell 2000 ETF start to move high. We are, we are long. We are long from way lower down. So we've got a little bit of room, but this is very important. And, I, and I'm i going to have to talk about it in a moment, but let me just get to the SMHs. The SMHs uh, have really acted very poorly. They've had this huge digestive phase. I've been talking about this coming up for ages from the 283.07 high that was made the 11th of July down to the 200.49 low that was made 5th of August. Good rebound to the 618 uh, um, area, uh, to the 250, 251 area, and now it's turned down. It could become a dreaded H. So I had a question about, oh, what was it earlier on? Let me just see if I can find it because it, it's, it's comparable. Uh, let's see. Nah, I can't find it. Oh, it's there. Okay. No, not there, not there. Oh, gosh, I can't find it. I did have a question, and I did answer it, and it had the H pattern. And I said, I don't think it's going to do – it has to do a little more to make the H. It has to – the 9 period has to go pink. Well, this one has turned pink. So the 200 period moving average on the SMHs at 218, that's going to be really important to monitor. Okay, with that said, I want to get to uh, – go back to gold – Gold is up uh, 16 at 2542. It needs to break that uh, downtrend line, and it needs to start a leg C um, just above the 2570.4 area. I think it's acting very well. I've been talking about this. The weekly chart's holding very nicely. High-level consolidation now from that resistance line. Look how many bars have been above, not majority, but very close to uh, 50%. Okay, maybe a little uh, less than, but it's nice that it's doing that. And a leg C in the monthly charts is a good chance in September that we make that leg C extension, and that's going to be very positive. Let's go to silver. Silver's acting a little bit uh, better today. It's up 7 8 cents at 29.34. That's what you want to see. You want to see this pink nine period moving average getting so close to turning back to green. And it will do that if we can get to 29.58, 29.63. I suspect it will go back to green. But it is acting quite nicely now. Now I need to go high-grade copper. High-grade copper was very weak the last couple of days. Today it's bouncing up 07 at 4.15 for a continuous contract. See, this is the importance of the 200-period moving average. It's a rising moving average, and it's, it's made a higher low in that weekly chart. So there's the dreaded H pattern. It hasn't failed so far. It's a nice H pattern, successful. We'll see if high grade up can go high. But in the meantime, Dow's up 70, down 77 as it is up. <coughs> Sneeze. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Sorry about that sneeze, folks. I'm back and uh, Dow's down, uh, what, 63, S&P's up 11. This rotation is really important because what it says is that I'd call the uh, Tuesday sell-off not necessarily a one-off, meaning we've seen those 600 points in the Dow, 700, 800 points, single moves to the downside before. And then there was this uh, lopsided rectangle formation uh, or cup formation that started to go to higher highs and then went back to the previous high uh, in, in a number of stair-step moves. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's quite the same right now. But in the meantime, what I am looking at is um, – the sell-off that should have continued Wednesday with the Dow down 380 or 450 and the S&P down 52 to 62, um, that hasn't happened. So it tells me that there is buying strength. The buying strength isn't enough because of the rotation. You can see, for instance, today, you've got that UNH pullback. UNH was helping the, the Dow go higher. But now you've got it uh, acting as a, as a weak link by itself. It's a strong uh, it's a Dow's... Uh, the way Dow's weighted, but that's the same thing as uh, looking at rotation. So it's a rotation within a sector. Now, what I am looking at is that pattern I was talking about was the arch formation, and you can see I was asked about Lulu, Lululemon, Athletica trading at 257 round number, uh, up a dollar 49. Then it went to a Doji peak E right on um, on the I. I think that's a 50 period moving average. I'm not sure. It's got a very faint line there. I can just off the hand, offhand. I'm, I can't remember which one it is. Actually, I can click on it and find out. Uh, this is, I think, a 50. Yes, yeah, a 50. Okay, I put it in very faint. People ask me about different uh, moving averages, etc. So I always just put them in and say, okay, I'll check it out. But I'm, I'm sticking with my exponential moving averages. 9, 14 is the most important. Then comes the 200. But then I will also add 20 just every once in a while. We'll see. I've got a 20 right here. 
that my Dow chart that I show subscribers every day. There it's the pink line, that thick pink line. Um, and as long as all three are moving higher, that's a really good sign. And you can see right here is my Richard Arms Trin, um, he calls it uh, Arms Index. Uh, it's just been doing nothing, didn't get overbought or even oversold. So it just tells me that there's a status quo in the market, even though everyone's talking uh, very bearish. I, I, I'm, I'm also not very bullish. I'm, I'm moderately bullish, but selectively. And that's the way I think you have to look at the market. It's rotational. So this is the arch formation. If you look at the SMHs, keep your eye on the left side chart, the daily chart. That's a much bigger arch. So that's the one that says now is a greater possibility of it fading with such weak technicals, but it hasn't broken the 200 period moving average. Okay, back to the question. So I had a question. VW... AGY. So that's Volkswagen. Volkswagen AG. Now it says one tenth share. Oh, I, I, I just copied what was there, but it's the it's what you can buy for to buy if you want to buy a Volkswagen. So the question is, um, morning Basil, uh, would you take a look at Volkswagen for me? I have um, I have the daily at peak C. I have the daily as well at peak C. With several dojis on the pullback. Well, don't forget, this is a stock that trades overseas as well as here, so you can expect that. It is also close to breaking above the 914. Well, we don't know yet. It's still pink, but it's getting closer. It isn't close enough yet. It actually has to go quite a bit higher to at 1125. It has to go to 11. I'd say probably 1153 would do it. Um, my thoughts, my thought was to start a position on the break top side of the 914. What are your thoughts? It has a killer dividend. <laughs> I will listen to the show. Well, thanks. So well, I, the way I'm looking at it is, you know, I first of all, I, I don't I don't necessarily put a lot of um, import into input and import into uh, high dividends. Sometimes I mean, they can cut their dividend if things don't go right for Volkswagen. And have a look at this. You've got RAC, that's different altogether. That's Ferrari, made a peak F top just uh, three days ago. Look, RY, C, except I think this is just the Rolls Royce company. R Y C E Y. Uh, what is that? That That's also made a, it's made a leg D in the monthly chart, and the daily has gone to peak A, peak B, peak C, C1, C2. There I can call it a C2, but it's still holding very nicely with a nine period moving average. But if I go to Ford, Ford is just going nowhere. It looks terrible. If I go to GM, that's the star. I'm not trying to change your mind. GM's going to a peak C. Uh, in fact, this looks like the down. Went to a peak C under the previous all time high, 50.50. And is it going to make a leg D? Everything's uh, holding very well. I think it could. It's down a penny today at 48.45. All right. And Toyota Motors, Toyota Motors went to peak A, D. C, D, E. Little doji candle, E, and it's pulling back just a little bit. Nine is over the 14. It's better, but it's not a great-looking chart. Look at those weekly and monthly. So let's go back to, oh, now i got to type in again. V, W, A, G, um, Y. Yeah. So I'm with you. I wait for the 914. It's just not a favorite chart pattern. It's not a favorite stock. I, and they, I, I think that this chart is lagging for a good reason. So I'm just saying you've asked me the question and the question answer is yes, if it goes above that and goes green, it could certainly bounce and then it could make that's a long distance to go towards the C. But first of all, I do a trend line right here. Oh, what I was busy doing with someone to do. Oh, get back into position. Oh, well, that's the way it is. Let me just check this e mini. Ah, uh, there it is. Ah, and there's your leg D I was waiting for in the uh, in the ten minute chart. And you see this line here in the e mini ten minute. This is that fifth. Yeah, this is the high that was made. Look, that's the high. Oh wait, that whoa. Why have I got, have I got all these Fibonacci numbers in? It goes back. Oh, it goes back not to the high that was made over there uh, on the 
20, on the 3rd of August in the 5660 area, but this little bounce right there to 56. All right, I want to get rid of some of these things that drive me a little nuts. But in the meantime, back at the Anna, oh, this goes way back. This is a trend line that goes to this trend line right here of 56.28. Am I correct? Yeah, 56.25. that goes back from a midpoint in a rectangle formation from quite some time ago, and that's the one I'm going to keep in. Yeah, I just keep it. You never know when we're going to get back there. The first one that we need to look at, oh, we've already been back there. All right, scrolling to the right, there we go. We're in leg D, in leg E in the five-minute chart, and we've just either started a brand new leg B in the one-minute chart, or it's an E because it never took out the starting point low. So, yeah, things are acting very well. Okay, so let me just sum this up real quickly. It's not my favorite chart, but you asked me a question, and it's got that dividend. I'd be really worried about the dividend if you're looking out six months. If you're worried about three months, maybe that's not the case. But uh, all I'm going to say is yes, if that's your scenario, then I would definitely start as it goes if that nine period moving average is cross positive. Okay. But put it if you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com.
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks. Uh, yeah, just to clarify, so, Greg, this is not my favorite of, of the uh, um, automobile stocks. I protest in the category of, of probably having good balances every once in a while. Longer term, I think it's good, good. But right now, it's in a trading band. It's doing very nicely. General Motors has done very well. Some of the others I'm not that impressed with. Okay, with that said, uh, next question came in with a GDX. A, G a GDX did pull back quite sharply, and I'm, I'm staying with that peak C bit because I, I could give it an alternate count because it never took out the low. Um, that low that was made back in uh, June, I think it was, at the 33 area. So um, that's still in play. So this could be a G, um, E slash C, but everything about it says that it should go higher um, into the 38 and then 39 area. It might take a little while. Um, the weekly chart is still holding very nice in terms of the nine period exponential moving average. Um, let me just get rid of this. I'd put that in just to see if it broke out from that level where it could go to. That's the one that I was safer that I thought was safe. And it's a leg D in the monthly chart. Got the whole monthly wish to go above uh, the, um, to go maybe into the 40, try to get to 41.90, 42. Uh, we'll see if that works out. Uh, so uh, in the meantime, yeah, you've got, you've got support. It's making lower lows and lower highs. And the night period moving average yesterday went pink. So it says it's got a lot of work to do to get back. And that's interesting because the gold mine, you see, the gold, I think, is more, um, related to the Mideast fracas that's going on. But that's different to the gold miners. I prefer to see gold miners lead and gold just doing well, but the miners, and that's not happening here. Next thing I was asked about was to make, where did it go? Um, so we did that, we did that, did that. Where did I write it? Oh, XLU. Have I updated the XLU? Leg E in the weekly, leg C in the monthly, and A, B... I don't think that's a new, I don't think by one penny, no, it didn't make it. So that on the 21st, 75.53, 75.54, right, that's what I thought. So it went to C, and here it is in leg D. In leg D, all-time high was way back over there, and that was in, I think it was May or something. No, September of 2022 at... Uh, 78.22. Let me just do this. 78.22. So we've got it in writing, and I think that was 9. 20. 22. All right. Comes tumbling down to 55. Goes back peak A, peak B, and leg C in the monthly. And leg C today had a high of 77.51, less than a point away from an all-time high. I think it will get there. And this is an E. Nothing wrong with any of the technicals. And the stochastic is at 85, 86% and flat. So that just says to me, that is a good sign. Um, nine period moving average is way above the 40. Yep, that's still looking good. That's the S&P Select Utility Spider Fund. Uh, where was support? Oh, where's support? I, I'm going to make support much lower down um, because you're looking at the long term. I put it at 74 to 73. Um, no, I should say that's intermediate term, meaning three to six weeks. I'd put that, I'm going to make it 73. 73 to 72 is important support. Uh, but before that, the very shorter term, you've got moving averages between 74 and 72, and that's going to be uh, really key. Right now, going to higher highs and higher lows, that's really important. Then a question came in. If I can find the darn thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, could, I, could I look at FCX? And I can't remember. Was it uh, Bob? I don't remember now. Look, this is that dreaded H pattern. Uh, this is Freeport McMorrin. And it is um, a copper company. 
So this is your A right here. I just haven't updated the near term. A, that's your B, that's your C, there goes your D. Now in the dreaded H pattern, most of the time when you can go all the way instead of feigning at a peak A or B and coming down and testing the left side low, if you can go all the way to a C and then a D and that D is over the 200 period moving average, which this has done exactly, I'm still not yet putting in the sell signal. I have to wait for the end of the day uh, on the daily chart. Um, most of the time, it says it could pull back, but you've got a lot of support before you get to the left side low, and it might not even get there. And that's at 40, uh, sorry, 39.08. That was made on the uh, 5th of August. So, uh, so the question is, oh, you know, the same question, dreaded H. Yes, it, it, um, it, it's not yet a dreaded H. I would put it closer to the left side low, but at this point, the low of three days ago was 40... Point eighty five. If it takes out forty, there's a, there's a chance that Freeport Black Mountain can go lower. The weekly chart has got nine period moving average way under the fourteen. MACD's weak, stochastic week is weak. This looks like it wants to make lower lows and lower highs so far. Most importantly, that whole thirty eight area. Whew, that's going to be really important to hold. If it can balance, it, it, give it two weeks. In two weeks time, it needs to close above forty five seventy. And it's at 42.20 right now. All right, hope that helps. Next question came in. Wait, was it over here? Yes. It is. Oh, I can't even read that. Let me just see what this says here. Uh, uh, 10th understood. Oh, uh, yes, you did a great call, Basil. All the nervous rollover Nellies were running for the hills. You stayed true to your system. Congratulations. Well, I like to say the day is young, um, and now it leads me to the next thing, because I always look and say, what if I'm wrong? So here's what if I'm wrong. Let's go to the Dow. The Dow now is down 30, uh, 39 points. Um, now, I always, let me go to the futures, the YM. So the futures did something that I talk about very often. I talk about in the in the price of the in the Chamber Wave methodology, if a price goes to a peak C and then pulls back and then rallies and then just misses that going to the D by very, a very small amount, usually it's pennies, and then comes down, I'm saying that could be a phantom peak D. I'm calling it peak C1, C2, and I invariably put a plus sign and I change the plus sign color to red to say, hey, that's a warning because that could be acting like a peak D. Then you've got to be ready for a deeper pullback. But the 9 is way over the 14. The Mankey did cross negative. The retro strength is weak. The stochastic's now gone under. It was over in the 85% and 90% actually area earlier on. Now it's at 68%. And the on-balance bond pulled back a little bit. But that 9 is saying there's still intern. So what if I'm wrong? And I'll do that when I get back. So I need to look at that. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, 
You don't have to worry about that. As Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, I've got a 30 minute e mini right here, but maybe it's technical. Tomorrow I'll do it. But this is technical. Uh, technical, I just want you to say it's a thing called Japan Wave Restart. If this low right here wasn't taken out, and all of these were exactly the exact same lows, even this one here was the exact same low, um, then I could have had a restart going peak A, but that's an A, that's a B. And then you look for the low, that's an A, but that's higher than the B, so that becomes a C, and if this didn't take out that one, that would have come, become a D. So I'll talk more about it tomorrow. In the meantime, I just want you to, since it came up uh, in a half hour E-mini chart, I just thought I'd talk about it while it's there, it's very important to do that. But we have got that peak D in the 10-minute chart. We've got a peak E in the 5-minute chart. And it's a G slash C, but I think it's really a G in the 1-minute chart. And it did turn negative, so that makes it a G for now. So I'd say the key 55, 35, 200 period moving average support uh, in the 1-minute chart is really important. But you want to see by... This afternoon, if there's going to be a rally, and if there's no rally, then I have to. That's why I wanted to talk about it. What if I'm wrong? Um, then, um, if there is a rally and the E mini is able to get to 55, I'd say 68, anywhere up in that area, it's another 20 points from here. I would say that that would be really positive going into Friday, especially if there's any good news, economic news Friday. So, let's go back here. So, what if I'm wrong? Then I have to say, I went back and I, I spoke about this earlier and I said, I'm not going to do it. That this high that was made on the 19th of August in the Dow, and people say, ah, you know, Dow, it's, it's 30 stocks. That's not the point. You All you want is to pick uh, uh, an area that you're comfortable with, that you're used to, that can, can rally and make money. Okay, that's the whole thing. So this is the high that was made on the 19th of August. And if I have to lean forward to actually see it, uh, 
40,907.32. No. 40,907.32. Yeah, the next day was 40,909.38. So about a dollar fifty higher, right? So what I do if it's that close often enough, I've tried not to do it with the indices because they, you know, they're made up of a lot of individual components. The Dow's only 30, but the others are 500 or 100 or 1,000, 2,000. Meantime, I was going to call this a, a, a phantom peak B. Then I would have gone to a C, and then I would have gone to a D right here. So I would have been saying, if that was the case on Friday, if there is a move above 41,376.00, the round number all-time high of the 18th, I want to take off quite a bit of our UDOW, and I want, in fact, to consider that the next day, if there is a peak formed by a lower high, and that would have been Tuesday, I would have said, if the Dow is down X amount, we can, for those of you who are aggressive, you can start some kind of at least maybe just a one-to-one -one short position like in the DOG, DOG. I thought about it and I just left it. I'm still of the opinion, based on the technicals that I'm looking at right now, and even though the Dow is now weaker, and I, mine's 132, this is not the action you want to see. The action you want to see, regardless of the 914, where there was a rally yesterday, that rally should have held, and today should have been a higher high, and we should be at least halfway into the body of the candle of uh, Tuesday into the 41,250s. So I'm giving you the scenario that says, oh, I, I've got enough technicals here that say we should be long, but at the same time, there is evidence that says, you know, you could have picked a phantom peak, and it would have been right to go with your YM, which is your um, almost double top in the futures itself. Let me just hold a ping. And we're going to go to, we have Mike in Ormond Beach. Hi, Mike. How are you? Hey, Basil. I'm doing great. Hey, uh, Basil, I've been looking at some of these oil service stocks. Yes. And two in particular, Halliburton, H-A-L, yep. and another one is uh, H. P. Do you think they're getting um, close to a bottom? Did you say H T? H P. Oh H P. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I know that one well. That is uh, um, American, American pain. and and pain. Yes. Um, you know, there's something going on. It's almost like the natural gas from a, you know, that just uh, so once it started to fail, it just couldn't get going again. In the HM uh, HP, we've got almost a one to one to the downside in the weekly chart. Right. In the um, Halliburton, and I've been let me tell you, I've been watching this so closely because when they get going to the upside, they can have. It's just the single leg of those weekly charts, those single leg A's to the upside, they are fabulous. But when they fail, they just are so persistent. I'm going to say to you, look, if you were to nibble right here at 29.27, and all it's doing is making lower lows and lower highs, it's done the dreaded H at a peak D, and usually at a peak D, I was speaking about this earlier on, when it pulls back, it finds support on the left side low, but if it takes it out, you can have a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. That means the high of Halliburton's high of the 26th of August of 3245 uh, 32 and the low of uh, 30.31. So that's two, two and a, let's just say 220. So you can go 220 down from uh, this low here. That's the way this H pattern works. That takes you to 2831. <clears throat> You're at 2928 right now. So here's what I'm going to recommend. We used to have someone, Bob, in the den, used to sell special gloves, metal gloves to catch the falling knives. This is metaphorically, okay? Um, yep. <laughs> this is a falling knife. And I don't, I would rather be buy. I'd rather sacrifice some points to the upside mm -hmm. by buying a leg B rather than 
to guess. So I'm going to suggest that even though normally under these circumstances you are so close to some kind of a bounce, I'd say, oh, I'd hold off doing anything. And now the market is selling you know, the Dow's down 180 and the S&P's down six. It's telling me that there are, um, the, 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 there's riptides, there are tur there's turbulence now in the market that is right. not being, that, that I've got to recognize. And I, I'm just going to say to you, rather, rather wait and let's see what happens by about, say, Friday, by Monday. If there's a turnaround tomorrow, then by Monday, you should be moving quite nicely higher into the 30.40 area. So where's well, the big deal? It's about a dollar higher, dollar and a half. I'd much rather wait for that. So I'm going to just say, hold right. off for now. Let's look at it again. I'll look at it again tomorrow, but I'll look at it again on Monday. Thank you, Basil. Thank you for calling, Mike. Always Setting appreciate it. Most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LarryOg24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryOg24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I just wanted to show this chart. Like it has the one minute uh, E mini at the PG, it has the five minute at PE, and look at this. <clears throat> now I talk about the. Um, 10 minute, sorry, in the 10 minute chart, you know how I talk about those peak Ds? Well, look at this. Let me expand this a little bit. Look, 10 minute chart, gave okay, beautiful peak D right there at the 200 period moving average <clears throat> back at about 3.30 this morning. I uh, didn't get that, but that one was nice. It was just under the peak D, under the previous sign, this kind of V-shaped pattern, another peak D, then you got that low, about the 8.30 news, economic news, the market spiked up, held the left side low, and then went peak A, peak B, peak C. Here's your peak D. It had the 9 period moving average. It hasn't turned pink yet, but look what happened. It went right through the 200 period moving average. So that makes the 55.37 200 period moving average the magnet line. It needs to close above that in the next hour and a half. 
uh, I, next hour and a half. Yeah, I'd say within the next uh, 50 to 70 minutes. <clears throat> and uh, if it takes out the low of the day, which is 55.12, uh, uh, that's going to be very ugly. And that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of choppiness in here. You've got this rotation going on. And I'm, I'm now I got I got no choice but to be a lot more careful. I am anticipating there's enough strength in the Dow. But now look at this. You've got a gain. Look what you've got a gain. You've got a gain. Today's loss, whatever it is at the close, if it if it holds all the way through the through the end of the day, here's the Dow. And then you have to make it up. And then you have to make it up to the to the to, more than that. You have to make it up double to get to that uh, 40, 41, 250 area. It's a big ask, but that nine is still holding, and that's the really a clue. We're going to see over the next three to four sessions whether or not that nine free move average, even today, it's holding really well. If that stays, it's going to be a springboard for a move back up sometime next week. We'll see what happens, but that 40,500 40, uh, in the Dow has to hold, and uh, we'll see. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Stay tuned for